Hey, what's going on, everybody? Miami finally has its offensive coordinator. It's Josh Gaddis from Michigan. David, instant reaction to this big news for Miami. Yeah, I think, you know, the the word coming out of uh, the Mario Cristobal camp when he was first hired was that he wanted to make some splashy hires to his staff. And I think Josh Gaddis, um, you know, fits that bill. Um, hiring the Broyles Award winner, right? That that's a big deal. Um, one of the the rising stars at offensive coordinator in college football. Um, hiring a guy away from a Michigan program that was in the college football playoff this year. So uh, first reaction was wow. Second reaction was. Man, Mario's really good at keeping things under wraps. Um, but yeah, that, those were just kind of my first two reactions. So as you mentioned, just a little bit of a rundown with Josh and his coaching career. I find it very interesting. I know we'll get into this in a little bit here. But just to recap, again, like you said, Broyles Award winner goes to the nation's top assistant coach. He's 38 years old. Michigan, like you said, college football playoff appearance. They go 12-2, and two, win the Big Ten, third in total offense in the Big Ten. He was there for three years, and one of the things that I noticed was just the improvements that they made to this past year with this offense. Um, essentially, running, they led the conference in running, uh, in rushing there. They, they were down before that the last couple of years, so just a lot of improvement while he was at Michigan. He's also been at Alabama, Penn State, Vanderbilt, and Western Michigan. A guy that's just a, certainly a very interesting with, with his dynamic in terms of where he's come from in a short amount of time as a coach. I think it's good, like you said, David. David, when we talked about this before, after the Kevin Steele stuff, you know, with the him being a veteran, one of the things I told you, I was like, you know, I'd like to see Miami get kind of a young, kind of energetic guy on offense, and just to kind of mix with with their coaching staff, uh, just some, right, uh, just different types of coaches, and I think that's what Gaddis is, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting learning more about him uh, from what we already know so far. How about the fit with Mario? Because I think it's a good fit, right? We. We, we feel pretty confident saying that Mario's going to want a power element to his offense, right? I don't think that necessarily means that he's not going to spread it out and throw the ball around as well. But Mario being an offensive line guy, he's going to want to run the ball. He's going to want to have that power element. Um, and one thing, just kind of doing uh, some quick research on, on Josh Gaddis, right? One thing that struck me was when he first arrived at Michigan, right? He was coming from Alabama. He was the co-OC uh, under Mike Loxley, who was the OC at the time at Alabama that year, 2018. Uh, that Alabama team was was very explosive, uh, threw the ball all, all around the yard. Um, and, and I found it interesting, right, that Josh Gaddis, his first year at Michigan, um, said, we're going to we're going to spread it out. We're going to, we're going to throw the ball all over the field. Uh, we're going to push it downfield. Um, and I think he kind of discovered that Michigan at that time didn't necessarily have the personnel to do that. Right. Um, and my understanding is year over year over year, right. He was there three years at Michigan. He's, he started to kind of understand more, Hey, I got to start tailoring my offense, uh, to my personnel. And I think we saw that here this year, right, with, with the power offense they were running. Um, I do think he improved the speed at the wideout spots during his time there at Michigan. Um, but what I liked was he's not a stubborn guy that's going to try and, you know, square peg, round hole type of situation, right? Uh, we've seen that at Miami over the years. And uh, I like that Josh Gaddis is willing to, um, you know, play to the strengths of his players. And that's not a surprise to see that if you know about his background. This is a guy that was a standout safety at Wake Forest. I remember voting for him for to be an all-conference guy. They won the, the, the ACC while he was there as a safety. And he's a guy that was very – he wanted to make it known he wanted to be a defensive coordinator when he started his coaching career. But he got his, you know, his, his job, his, his start kind of as a wide receivers coach – um, after being the GA at UNC and then goes to Western Michigan. And that's where he started. So he was able to, you know, show that versatility, but also not be stubborn in what he wanted to do and basically use what he had essentially and just kind of 
build off of that and, and take everything he's known from the defensive side of the ball. He's a guy that was drafted in the NFL as a player as well. Uh, right. But he was able to use that on the offensive side of the ball. And I think that s- says a lot about him in general, um, just as a coach and as a person. I, I think, like you said, he's going to be a guy that makes adjustments. And it really is impressive what they were able to do th- this past season. Ran for over 3,000 yards as an offense in 14 games, 5.2 yards per carry, 39 rushing touchdowns. And look, you, like you said, Mario Cristobal, you want the offensive line. You want this power element. Uh, talking to former Miami guys, they want this this running attack back, that doesn't mean they're going to get away from the passing attack. They know what they have at the quarterback position and wide receivers. It's just like you said, more well-rounded and and Miami didn't run the ball. They've not ran the ball well for a while now. It's really surprising. If you look where Miami has been in the ACC in the past 10 years. So, so two things with that, right? So I, I interviewed Mike Carley, you know, about his NFL draft prep stuff, right? Um, and I just asked him, you know, what kind of OC, what kind of offense do you want Miami to run? I was surprised. He said, I want to see Miami get back to more power. I want to see them control the line of scrimmage and and run the ball a little more and build a passing game off that. So I was surprised by that, right. Um, just because of the position he plays. But, you know, I do think players understand that the toughest offenses to stop are the balanced ones. Um, to that, you know, to the points you were making though, I do find it interesting because, and it's going to be mainly because of this Michigan year, right? Um, I think the reputation Gaddis is going to be coming to Miami with, uh, you know, from the casual, somewhat casual college football fan is that, oh, Miami's going to run a pound you offense. Really though, when you look at his background, He's, ba- he's mainly RPOs, uh, you know, Joe Moorhead, who was Mario's OC at Oregon here recently. Uh, Josh Gaddis was a part of his staffs at Penn State. Uh, you know, that Alabama year, they ran a ton of RPOs. Gaddis's first year, he tried to implement a heavy RPO game. I think they were even maybe even uh, no huddle that first year at Michigan. So his background really is kind of more more of like a spread type situation. But again, to the point I was, I was speaking to earlier, he's a guy that's going to adapt his offense to the strengths of his players. Um, And so I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily view this hire as like, Oh man, Miami's going backwards in terms of uh, they, they made the leap into the, the spread offense going all in on that during the Rhett Lashley era. I don't think that, you know, they're now going to some outdated style of offense now with Josh Gaddis. And the wide receivers are impressive. Again, I have a, a, a rundown. We'll have more content on the website on InsideTheU.com, but just the wide receivers he's coached, to your point that it's not just about this running attack that we're speaking of because Michigan had this success recently. But when he started Western Michigan, he, he coached Jordan White. Led, led, he was an All-American wide receiver. He coached Jordan Matthews. You remember him from the NFL Jerry Judy was the Blitnikoff Award winner. Coach Tim at Alabama during that one season. I do want to point out that even though Coach Cristobal coached at Alabama, Gaddis did as well. They did not overlap. But I do believe that's a big part in this because it, Mario is going to take a lot that he's learned from Alabama. And, and I think that he'll feel comfortable with a guy like Gaddis, even though he was only there the one season, just that he understands what, what this is about. So I think that that experience is good. But again, the top receivers and, and while at Michigan, you know, Nico Collins is a guy, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones as well. Um, two other receivers that were drafted in the NFL just in the short time that that he was there. And um, the size of wide receiver, with, especially with, you know, with those guys, that, that that's good to see. But it, it's going to be interesting to see how he builds this. But I like that we talk, David, we're talking about different things and what he's doing at wide receiver, what he's done with running back. I touched on a little bit about his diversity with, uh, being a safety and understanding um, coverages from that standpoint and how to attack right. it. And I, I just think this is a guy that has shown a lot already in a short, short period of time that he's been a coach. Yeah, I think too, um, you know, look, there's already been some negative recruiting going on. Uh, I know, like, I mean, this is just how the game is played, right? I'm not speaking down on anyone uh, for doing this, but Brian McClendon, right, who was Miami's wide receivers coach for a week or two, he's been recruiting these big-time South Florida receivers, and part of his message to them right now is, 
hey, Mario's going to run more of a run-heavy type of offense, right? Um, I think hiring a guy like Josh Gaddis, who, you know, we don't know this yet, but I would assume is also going to coach wide receivers at Miami, pushes back against that narrative, right? Josh Gaddis is the OC and coaching wide receivers. He's not going to run a system that doesn't highlight the wide receivers, right? Um, so I wanted to sneak that point in there. I think too, one thing that excites me, uh, Chris, is if you go back and look at the quarterbacks he's worked with at Michigan, I don't think he's worked with a guy as good as Tyler Van Dyke, right? Yeah, from Shea Patterson, Joe Milton, uh, Cade McNamara, just those top guys uh, recently. I was just looking at that, kind of see where they ranked in the, in the Big Ten. But yeah, you're right. You know, Tyler's coming in with more accolades, more accomplishments, essentially, um, so far. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's big for – and I would I would guess that's part of the – you know, that's one thing that attracted Gaddis to this job. Uh, and I would say that about any OC candidate that Mario was looking at, right? It's an attractive job because of not only Tyler, but Jake Garcia. Um, and, you know, you mentioned, too, the wide receivers he's developed. He's known, too, a, as being a good recruiter. Um, and, and that's going to be big because it's such a deep year here in South Florida, and we've already seen some of these guys here at recent seven-on tournaments. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, and, and I definitely w- wanted to talk about quarterback because that's a big deal in terms of how that will go, you know, that relationship between the offensive coordinator and the quarterback. In terms of him as a recruiter, just looking at his profile on 24-7 sports, and you guys can all check this out because it shows where he's been the kind of the primary or secondary recruiter, and just looking at it, it's two five-star guys that he was a part of in the recruiting, and, and I, one that stands out to me is Justin Shorter, a five-star wide receiver right. um, while he was at Penn State. Um you touched on him coaching wide receivers. He's coached wide receivers throughout his coaching career. Uh, even when he was a co- coordinator at Michigan, he still served as that receivers coach. So like you said, I think that's safe to assume that he'll still coach that position. But yeah, the, he's also got, got some other big guys as well. Um, it, it's interesting to see how he's been as a recruiter. And he's a guy from North Carolina, again, from Wake Forest. I just wrote an article about Kevin Steele and his recruitment and his background and his ties. And I think Josh Gaddis in the North Carolina region is certainly an area they'd like to get more into. Yeah. And and just crossover, right. Immediate crossover at Miami for this cycle. Jalen Brown is an obvious guy to, to speak to, right. Five-star local guy, Gulliver prep, uh, Michigan. And and I think Miami's was the team to beat, but Michigan was a school he was highly interested in as well. So, you know, hiring Gaddis is, is not going to hurt Miami's chances at all. Um, how do you think how do you think the rest of this staff on offense might build out? Do you think do you assume he's gonna coach receivers and then they'll have to go get like a co-OC quarterbacks coach? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I would like for him to coach receivers I'd, and and you know, right. just have a different quarterback coach. Just to recap, so this is Miami's fifth assistant coach on the staff currently. You get 10 nowadays. Um, so they've got some work to do. They only have the running backs coach, Kevin Smith and then Alex Mirabal at offensive line. So that's where they're stand on the offensive side of the ball. So it's going to be interesting. But yeah, I would like to see um, someone come in as the quarterback's coach at, at this point. Also, you're looking at a tight ends guy as well uh, to go ahead and build that out. And uh, It's going to be interesting, but I, I would assume Gaddis is, again, going to take over that wide receiver spot um, as coaching staff. And whether guys he knows um, will come right. along, that'll be the key thing. Um, certainly we'll, we'll report on anything we hear there, but – I think there'll be big names. And again, you've got a quarterback room, not just with Tyler Van Dyke. I, I don't right. want to just um, stop at that name because Jake RC, I, I still think he's going to be a very good quarterback whenever his time comes. Um, and Jakari Brown's a guy that's in the mix as very well. Very talented. That, yeah. So Miami's at a good spot. I think a quarterback's coach w- would like to come into this situation, not just for 2022, but moving forward. Yeah, I agree. I think they should go co OC quarterbacks. Uh, you know, you could even you know, sell it as grooming you to be the next play caller, you know, hoping that Gaddis has success and moves on to a a head coaching job, maybe uh, down the road. Um, How do we, so, you know, for any head coach, but I think when Mario was hired, everyone was wondering, right, who are his coordinators going to be? And and that was going to set the tone for, um, you know, how, how successful can this Mario Cristobal era be from the jump? 
how would you characterize these coordinator hires, Gaddis and Steele, home run, triple, double, single? How would you characterize it that way? Because to me, it's a home run. I think he's done a really good job. Yeah, I think they're both great hires. I, I, I you know, I, I again when I talked about you, you mix a veteran guy with a, a young guy that won the Broyles Award. Um, you know, I think that's that's great. You know, the two guys that have been around college football. I think that's what stands out to me too. Is these guys have been around. You know, Kevin Steele with all the top programs he's been at. I touched on Josh Gaddis with Alabama. But Michigan was in the playoff. Look, Miami wants to get to these points, and you want guys that have been there. They don't have a roster full of guys that have played at the right. top level. So getting coaches, Mario Cristobal, Pac-12 championships. He's been at Alabama, uh, won a title. So, uh, of course, his stuff as a player. But I think the hires are good. I think it's what Miami needs. They need to be, you know, they need to have guys like this with a real resume, um, guys that other other sta- other teams would love to have. And I think it's a good mix. Um, I like the fact, again, you get the veteran guy, a young guy. I think they both excel in what they do. And um, I, I like what the decisions that are being made. And I think that's what right. we've seen with Coach Cristobal. Look, you might uh, dispute the timetable. Time. <laughs> uh, it's been frustrating for a lot of people. Um, a right. lot of and, people. and we get that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But when it comes down to it, the guys he's hired, you're like, okay, the that results? makes sense. Uh, that, right. that looks good. So. And Coach Cristobal said last week, look, you know, he expected it done within a week. And at this point with coordinators, you expect this. That at, way. It just feels like it's going to round out quick. And then spring football right around the corner. 2023 recruiting is going to be a lot of fun, definitely. Yes. Do you think, do you have any concerns? So there was, you know, and I think these were fair points on the message board, you know, in terms of the timetable issue, uh, there was concerns that there's not going to be enough time to you know learn the playbook or the system leading up to spring football do you think that matters or there's now enough time i because there we probably have like a month right between now and the start of spring football i think all that's kind of overblown anyways in college football um i think the focus right now is mainly on the strength program um but anyways i i think if you were concerned about that i think a month is plenty of time to do that little first dive into the playbook. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. And honestly, I think spring football is a lot to do with player development too. Um, right. The basics of, of essentially your foundation as a program, but just improving. And I think that's what Miami needs to focus on anyways, but the offense is going to be in there and it's not like you're setting up game plans and spring ball anyways. You know, this is stuff right. for Gattis to learn the opponents. He'll do, he'll do that all off season, plenty of time to get ready. I, I'm not concerned with that at all. I think Miami will be fine again. There'll be some terminology changes, but yeah. you know, a play's a play, and, and essentially it comes down to beating your man, uh, the very simplest form of football. So, David, I know there's a lot we, we can still get into with yep. him. I, I do want to wrap this up. I, I want to thank everybody for watching. Let's let's go ahead and pump out some more content, gather more information yep. on Gaddis. What we know already, it sounds good. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Be sure to like the video if you if you like this. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. We're really close to 15,000 subscribers. I know we can do it this month. We'll keep pumping out content. So thanks everybody for watching. David, thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.